In the previous video, we learned about the mixture and the types of mixtures. In this video, we will learn about solutions, suspensions and colloids. Let us first know what is a solution. Do you like to drink lemon water? Lemon water is an example of a solution that consists of sugar and salt particles and water particles. And because it has the same texture, it is a homogeneous mixture. From this example, we can say that Solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Are the solutions only in the form of liquid? No. We can also have solid solutions such as alloys and gaseous solutions such as air. But what makes these solutions? We can divide any solution into two parts, solvent and solute. The component of a solution whose volume is greater than the other and which dissolves the other component in it is called a solvent. The component of a solution which is usually in small quantity and dissolved in the solvent is called a solute. Let us understand this by an example. Do you know the solution of iodine and alcohol which we call tincture of iodine? We make a solution of tincture of iodine by dissolving iodine in alcohol. Because here we take iodine which is in small amount and alcohol which is in large amount to make a solution. In this solution, iodine is solute and alcohol is solvent. Aerated drinks are also a solution in which carbon dioxide is dissolved in water. Therefore, carbon dioxide is solute and water is the solvent in aerated beverage solution. Now, let us study the properties of solutions. We will try to understand it through an activity. Take a tincture of iodine solution in a 50 ml beaker. Is the texture of tincture of iodine the same? Yes. Therefore, we can say that the solutions are homogeneous mixtures. Can you see tincture of iodine particles? No. Why? Because the diameter of particles of the solution are smaller than 1 nanometer. Therefore, they cannot be seen with the naked eyes. If we try to cross the beam of light in this beaker with the help of a torch, what do you see? Yes, you can see that the path of light is not visible in the solution. This happens because the particles of the solution do not scatter a beam of light passing through it due to their small size. Try separating iodine from this tincture of iodine solution using a filter paper. Did you succeed? No. Therefore, we can say that the particles of solute cannot be separated from the solution by the method of filtration. And if we keep this solution undisturbed, then you can see solute iodine particles do not settle down. That means solution is stable. Friends, you are aware that the solution contains different amounts of solvent and solute. 
Depending on the amount of solute present in the solution, it can be called diluted, concentrated or saturated solution. Let us know about it through an activity. Take 50 ml of water in two separate beakers. Mix salt in one beaker and sugar in another and mix them well. Keep the salt and sugar dissolved in both of these beakers until you cannot dissolve any more salt or sugar in the solution. Are the amounts of salt and sugars dissolved in water equal on this temperature? No. At any given temperature, the solute may dissolve as much as the capacity of solution. In other words, when no more solute can be dissolved in a solution at a given temperature, it is called a saturated solution. The amount of solute present in a saturated solution at this temperature is called its solubility. If the amount of solute contained in a solution is less than the saturation level, it is called an unsaturated solution. Now, if we heat these two saturated solutions on 5 degrees more and then try to dissolve them in salt and sugar, what do you see? We can see that we are able to dissolve more solute in solution. By this activity, we can conclude that at a given temperature, the solubility of different substances is different. The amount of solute dissolved in a given mass or volume of solution is called concentration of solution. We can write it in this way. We can also write the concentration of the solution in a percentage in these ways. Friends, if 50 grams of sugar is solute in 200 grams of solvent water in a solution, can you calculate the concentration of the solution? Pause the video and think about the answer and then match your answer. We can solve this question in this way. Friends, now that we have learned about the solution, let us now learn about suspension. A suspension is a heterogeneous mixture in which the solute particles do not dissolve but remain suspended throughout the bulk of the medium. For example, take 50 ml of water in a beaker and dissolve 1 teaspoon of chalk powder with the help of a glass rod. What do you see? This solution is a heterogeneous mixture in which the solute does not dissolve but remains suspended throughout and we can see these suspended particles with our eyes. Through this activity, we can see the properties of suspension. 1. Suspension is a heterogeneous mixture. 2. Suspension particles can be seen with the naked eyes. Now, if we cross a beam of light with the help of a torch in this suspension, we will find that these suspended particles scatter the beam of light, making its path visible. Solute particles settle down when left undisturbed. That is, suspension is unstable. Now, finally, if we filter this suspension with the help of a filter paper, we can easily separate the chalk powder from water. Therefore, we can say that suspended particles can be separated from the mixture. Let us now take the last type of solution that is, learn about 
colloidal solution. Take water in a 50 ml beaker. Now, add few drops of milk to it. What do you see? Milk particles are spread evenly in water. Can you see the milk particles? No. But if we try to pass a light beam from this solution with the help of a torch, we will find that the milk particles easily scatter a beam of light. Therefore, this solution looks like a homogeneous mixture, but in reality, this solution is a heterogeneous mixture. Such solutions are called colloidal solutions. Let us now look at the properties of colloidal solutions. By this activity, we can conclude that 1. Colloidal solutions are heterogeneous mixtures. 2. Colloid particles are so small in size that they cannot be seen separately by the naked eye. 3. They are so large that they scatter a beam of light and make its path visible. 4. When they are left undisturbed, then these particles do not settle down at the bottom. That is, they are quite stable. If we filter this colloidal solution with filter paper, can we separate milk and water? No. Therefore, we can say that colloids cannot be separated from the mixture by filtration. And friends, do you know another interesting thing? The dispersed particle which remains in colloidal form is called dispersed phase. And the component in which the dispersed phase is suspended is called dispersing medium. Colloidal is classified according to the state of dispersing medium and the dispersed phase. Here, you can see some examples of this. So friends, hope that you now have a good understanding of solution, suspension and colloid. In the next video, we will study about separation of components of mixture.